We appreciate your time here. Sure. Explain that, please. Well, I think what I found upsetting about it was things that we do today that would be uh, just the natural course of how to deal with uh, allegations of sexual abuse, uh, they, it was missed. Um, you know, the, the way some victims were treated or a lack of reporting to civil authority, to law enforcement. And uh, it, it, I found it to be just very disturbing. Attorney General. To that. Well, I would find that surprising. I don't think Bishop Troutman would do something like that on purpose. Um, that it was probably more dealing with trying to get uh, the victim and also the perpetrator taking care of that. Um, his style was not to publicize names. so. Then. Probably from reading the report and interpreting what he read. All right. So that would probably be the, the only way. I mean, certainly unless he has a confession from Bishop Troutman that he did that on purpose, that would be uh, speculation. You don't know of any such confession? No. All right. Let me ask. of the delay? Well, I think, first of all, with more victims. Once we posted names, and now with the Attorney General's report, if there are more victims, then it'll be coming forward. Mm -hmm. uh, we receive some today calls that are new to uh, names that we don't have. From potential victims? Yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. And uh, adding more priest names? No, no, no. Okay. It's names of priests that are on the list. Okay. So, uh, but it's still new victims with those priests. Let me ask you this about. Well, I don't think that would be, uh, at this time, something that we would look at because I can honestly say that in knowing him and also um, in the way he operated, I think we have to contextualize this. When Bishop Troutman came here back in 1990, mm -hmm. there, wasn't, there weren't records. Bishop Troutman created records. Bishop Troutman was the one who put people out of ministry. Uh, none of that was done before him. So, and with Bishop Watson, that's a different situation. Bishop Watson was informed of child abuse, and he told the uh, priest who reported it, basically to go home and mind his own business. And... He transferred the priest afterwards, and he continued to abuse. Well, I don't think it was a delay in transparency. We were following the advice of legal counsel. And uh, I think the legal counsel was being a little more contentious. And I didn't understand the full extent of it. But once I became aware of the full extent of it, 
we changed counsel. Crimes. Well, certainly criminal. Civil, I think, you know, we have to take that into perspective. I've always said, if the legislature does it, you know, I can't determine what they're going to do. However, I think this has to be across the board, you know, not just the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the list that we put out, there's not only clergy, but we have lay people, mm -hmm. which I thought for sure would be in the Attorney General's report, but it's not, which says that this is not just a church, Catholic Church issue, but it's a societal issue. So I would say that this would involve both all public and private institutions should be under the same, um, uh, same legislation. Now you drew the line between church well I can't stop them from suing so mm -hmm. I mean that would be their their choice all right let me ask you this uh, Bishop the ones that are named yes none of them none of them are still right. in ministry okay. right so as we go forward as as And I can understand that, Sean, because these people have been betrayed, you know. And the clergy, bishops and priests, are held to a higher standard. And for many Catholics, that's what they've been taught. And then to have that kind of uh, betrayal is very difficult. There's going to be anger. There's going to be people who are just going to walk away from it. And how can you argue with that? I, I mean, what else are they going to do? They feel lost. Mm -hmm. And my message to them is, don't give up faith in God. God is there to take care of us. These are human beings who have sinned, like we all sin. And yes, they are held to a higher standard, and they have to, have to pay for that. Bishop Persico, I want to thank you so much for your time here. Sure. Well, I think that I can do the answer that by an example. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of uh, uh, victims have called me when they saw the name of their perpetrator on the list to thank me. And they said, we finally feel validated. Because many of them feel like they're in darkness, that no one's going to believe them. They're isolated. I had a person who'd been waiting 49, 59 years to be validated. And uh, this is an opportunity for their story to be told and what they experienced. It's important for them. and say, you should become a priest? Well, first of all, um, we can talk a lot and promise 
transparency, uh, new way of doing things, all of that. It's not going to mean anything. It's going to be the actions that make the difference. And I think that if we're going to talk about transparency, we have to be transparent. And people have to be able to see that. We have work to do in building up the trust in people. They don't trust us. Because we've said, you know, this went on in 2002. Did we learn our lesson? No. Uh, yesterday was evident. So I think it's by our actions is going to say to people that, you know, we are going to be transparent. We are trying to make a difference. And young people, we've been having these uh, dinners recruiting young people. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we have seven new men coming into the seminary for the Diocese of Erie. So um, I think that if people see that you're really trying to do what is right, they respect that. In the days since, um Right. Well, I think we have a good plan. Um, I didn't realize that, th you know, trying to do something right in Erie with our policies and procedures was going to get that much attention. My main concern was, <clears throat> was the Diocese of Erie. And uh, so the, the pressure that I feel is constantly being interviewed <laughs> Uh, with, uh, you know, different newscasters. And I, I'm, no, you're fine. You're local. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think if we put a good system in place, then it'll go right. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't say we're going to stop every abuse, mm -hmm. but we will do our best. That's all I can promise. All right, once again, we appreciate it. Sure.